Welcome back to the shop, guys. I'm really excited about today's video because today we are going to start taking a good long look at these electronic Rochester Quadrajet and dual jet carburetors. Today I'm going to show you a technique that has been mostly forgotten about and lost to history, but it's a really fast, really easy, quick way to figure out whether your electronic Quadrajet or dual jet can properly regulate the fuel air mixture. This technique has been lost to history. Dealer service techs haven't done it in decades. Mechanic shops haven't used it in years, and the average home user doesn't even know about it. So if you want to learn more about your carburetor and make sure it's working properly, make sure you stay tuned and watch the video. Okay, now, in order to perform this easy three-step process, you're going to need a couple of tools. First, you're going to need a tachometer or a scan tool. If you're using a tachometer, you're also going to need a paper clip so that you can ground the diagnostic terminal inside the car. You're going to need something to plug up the vacuum line going to your air cleaner. You're also going to need a dwell meter later in the process, but we'll get to that later. And finally, you're going to need a piece of wire with some alligator clips so you can ground the green terminal in front of the carburetor. That's your mixture control solenoid dwell lead for the first step in the test. So why don't we go ahead and get that set up? Then we'll bring the car up to normal operating temperature and get started. All right, guys, let's get started. We've got the engine up to operating temperature. We've removed our air cleaner and plugged the vacuum line. Now you want to start the car. If you're using a tachometer, you want to attach it now and ground your diagnostic lead inside the vehicle. If you're using a scan tool, you can go ahead and hook the scan tool up and start reading your operational data. Next, you want to disconnect the mixture controlled solenoid here at the carburetor and ground the green terminal. Once you've done that, run the engine at 3000 RPMs. That'll make the engine run full rich when the terminal is grounded and the mixture control solenoid is disconnected. Once you have the engine up to over 3000 RPM, you wanna reconnect your mixture control solenoid here at the carburetor. You should see about a 300 RPM drop as the metering system takes over. If you don't, you've got a problem in your wiring to the mixture control solenoid, or you've got a problem in your evaporator canister or PCV system that's loading the engine with fuel vapors. Once you finish that, guys, we'll move on to step two. We're going to connect our dwell meter and remove the ground at this time from the mixture control dwell meter solenoid. Okay, now that we've got our dwell meter attached, I've already completed this, this step off camera because with this microphone, you'll never be able to hear me with the hood open and the engine idling. When the engine's idling and you've let it get warm, you've made sure the oxygen sensor is nice and warm by letting the engine idle a little high for a few minutes. Uh, you want to see your dwell meter varying somewhere around the 25 to 30 mark on the six cylinder scale. That shows you that the fuel air mixture and the mixture control solenoid is right where it should be and being properly regulated. If your dwell is fixed, meaning it's not moving at all, or it's too high on one side, like around 50 or around 10 degrees on the six cylinder scale, you've got a problem. If your dwell is varying, just to double check, choke the engine a little bit, make sure it continues to vary. If the dwell changes too much or stops moving at all with the engine choked, you've also got a problem and I'll explain after step three what you need to do. All right, step three is another easy one. <clears throat> you wanna leave your dwell meter attached, run your car over 3000 RPM with the throttle constant. That's when the ECM and the mixture control solenoid really start to regulate the fuel and air mixture. Car's gotta be at highway speeds with throttle over 3000 RPM. So you wanna do that, let the car run for a few seconds, then take a look at your dwell meter again. Again, you're looking at the six cylinder scale. The dwell should be varying somewhere around 30. If it's fixed or if it isn't moving at all, your mixture control solenoid is not regulating your fuel air mixture and you're probably getting a check engine light at highway speeds. So stay tuned in a few seconds. I'm going to tell you what to do when you have each of those three problems I've described with your dwell meter, either too high, too low, or fixed. Okay, now that we've completed the three easy steps to figure out whether our mixture control solenoid is able to regulate the fuel air mixture under varying conditions, I'd like to take this time to tell you if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit the like button. If you'd like to follow along more with the series and learn more about these carburetors, please hit the subscribe button. So now, 
If your dwell is very low, around 10 degrees on the scale, that usually means that you have an electrical problem, either with the ECM itself or the wiring going to the mixture control solenoid. If your dwell is fixed very high on the scale, 50 or right around 50, that can usually mean one of two, one of three things, excuse me. Either have an electrical problem with the circuit, you have a bad oxygen sensor, or the carburetor itself is running extremely rich and may need a readjustment or a rebuild. If the dwell isn't moving at all, probably means you either have an issue with your TPS voltage, so you want to double check that before you move any further. The carburetor itself needs to be recalibrated or rebuilt, or you may have an electrical problem, but that's usually not the case. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about the Rochester electronic quadrajet or dual jet carburetor, or you have an idea for a video you'd like to see about them, please leave a note in the comments section. Thank you for tuning in and following me as I learn how to make these videos to share something with you that I'm very passionate about. So I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.